I was too busy during the day to do laundry. That's what I told myself, but mainly, I just wanted some time out of the week to just be alone and unwind with my thoughts. The laundry room in the basement was always close to empty for the most part, save for a few college-goers in the early hours of the morning, so I always found myself there, squatting next to the spin cycle of my thoughts in the washer. Most of the time, I just pondered randomly and let my mind do its own white noise thing for a while. I must have been there on a Friday night, Saturday morning, and it was completely empty. It was early in the morning when my laundry finished the dryer cycle and I pulled my clothes out ready to collapse into bed in my apartment on the 15th floor of the building. I made my way over to the only elevator that came down into the basement in the center section. While waiting for the doors to open and with the help of the ceiling lamp, I started to read the notice board and the posters that advertised what was going on for the next month. Looking at the clock behind me, I noticed it was starting to get really late. Exactly 3 a.m. I really shouldn't keep doing this to my sleep schedule, I thought. I almost didn't hear the elevator doors open behind me. And if it weren't for the voice, I would have stepped in. That moment of hesitation probably, in retrospect, had saved me from an unknown fate. You know how elevators sometimes have a voice in their speakers to announce the floor and the direction it was heading? For example, if it was on the third floor on its way down, it would say something like, third floor, going down. The voice that spoke from the elevator came out many octaves lower and much slower than usual. Basement. Going down. I felt a wave of uneasiness wash over me. There was never, for as long as I've lived in the building, floors lower than the basement. I had never seen a button lower than B for basement in the elevator. I felt at that moment an extreme fear root my feet into place as I stood in front of the parted doors. The elevator doors usually shut after a few seconds, but they remained open for almost a complete minute, as if waiting for me to get in. When they finally closed, I had the impression it had given up for the time being. While not wanting to take the strange elevator, I also really was against the idea of climbing 15 flights of stairs with my laundry in tow at this hour. I decided to wait for the elevator to come back. It might have just been a faulty speaker, I rationalized. It was an old building. I suspected that maintenance hadn't caught on yet because nobody had noticed it at this hour. Surprised, I heard the sound of the elevator continuing down below the floor of the basement for an unknown number of floors before I heard the faint but unmistakable ding that signified the opening of the doors. So there were floors beneath the basement. How deep did the building go? I remembered how deep the dinging sound came from underground, and the muffled shuffle of what sounded like multiple people piling into the elevator, and suddenly felt like it wasn't the best idea to stay here waiting for the doors to open. I looked up at the highlighted button. It hadn't been my brightest idea to press it. I only wanted to go upstairs faster, but now I was scared of seeing the occupants from the elevator from its underground trip. I had basically guaranteed that the elevator would open on the basement on its way up. As soon as I came to that conclusion, I heard the elevator murmur on its way up, and I sprinted for the stairs that took me into the lobby. Halfway up the stairs, I heard the ding of the doors opening on the basement floor. I didn't dare look back. As I reached the main lobby, I took a breath. It was silent. 
but it was calm and well lit and I suddenly felt a bit silly for overreacting. I looked down at the dark stairwell to the basement, aware that I never heard the elevator doors close. Had it always been that dark in the basement? 